Hello guys, today I have for you another tutorial about building and flying SSTOs. Unlike my other tutorial, this one is aimed at not only absolute beginners, but also at people who, for whatever reasons, don't want to have anything to do with delta V calculations, even in the simplest form, such as filling in the Excel sheets. I tried to make this tutorial as simple as I could, so I hope it will be accessible to everyone. We will build three low orbit SSTOs just to prove that this method is scalable. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing you need to do is determine how much you want to put in orbit. Let's say you want to build a simple Mark 1 one-seater SSTO, so um, your, uh, let's call it payload. It's just the crew cabin plus wings plus landing gear and nose cones, etc. And we assume it's about three and a half tons total. You don't have to be super precise about it, just need to have a rough estimate. Now, to determine how much jet fuel you need, just multiply that 3.5 tons by 0.72 and you get 2.52 tons, which is how much jet your jet fuel tanks should weigh in total. I added three NCS tanks and one supersonic intake, holding 200 units of fuel, and that was more or less what we needed. Then, look at your total mass that you have right now, which should be around 6 tons, and multiply it by 1.5. This is how much rocket fuel you need, which is 9 tons. Once you have that, take your total mass again, which should be more or less 15 tons after adding some wings and landing gear, and multiply that 15 tons by 0.1333. You should end up with a number very close to 2, and this is how much rapier engines you need to add to your SSTOs. Once you have that, set the action groups and you're ready to go. Flying this plane is really simple. It has very large thrust to weight ratio and way more fuel than you need to get it into orbit, but it's all intentional. So once you take off, set your heading to about 20 degrees and keep it that way until you reach about 24 km altitude. You need to correct a little bit during your ascent, but even if you don't get it perfectly the first try, just try not to overheat. At 24 km altitude, your velocity should be about 1400 meters per second, so switch to closed cycle and continue to orbit with your heading at about 20 to 25 degrees. You can switch to map view, so you can pay attention to your apoapsis, and once it's well above the atmosphere, say at uh, 18 to 100 km, point prograde, cut the throttle, and set a maneuver node for circularization. This video is sped up only two times, and this is intentional, because I wanted you to be able to follow the ascent profile easily. As you can see, at 24 km we are flying almost 1600 meters per second, and this is the point where we switch to closed cycle, as you can see now that our oxidizer levels are decreasing. Now you accelerate until you reach 2200 meters per second, switch to map view and set a maneuver node for circularization. Once this is done, point prograde and relax while you continue towards your apoapsis. It's also a good time to, you know, admire a little bit the beauty of the planet below you. Just relax, the hardest part is already behind you. When you are outside of atmosphere and close to your node, point in the right direction and execute the burn. As you can see, we reached orbit easily with plenty of fuel, so congratulations for flying your SSTO successfully into orbit. Once you're done with your orbital business, you might want to deorbit and land your SSTO as close to KSC as possible. To do that, simply deorbit your vessel once it is above the bay you see right now, which is to the west of the continent KSC is on. You want your trajectory to overshoot KSC slightly, and uh, here my deorbit burn was around 450 meters per second. Normally, you don't need it to be that large, but since we are learning, it's easier this way. Upon re-entry, try to keep your pitch at 40 degrees and you won't have any problems slowing down. Once you're down to safer altitudes and velocities, you can either continue your flight to KC or, if you don't feel like it, just land anywhere. In any case, you should have enough fuel left to fly to KC conventionally, if you choose so. But, I hear you say, Mark, I want to have something more than just a simple one-seater SSTO. What is it good for if I can't send anything up into orbit? You're absolutely right, so let's see how this metal scales up. This time, we want to put 4 tons of cargo into orbit and we want to have a larger Mark II cockpit. With the cargo bay and utilities, we end up with a bit less than 7 ton of initial mass. Multiplied by 0.72, that gives us around 5 tons, so let's add one 4.5 ton liquid fuel tank. Now our mass is around 11.5 tons, we multiply that by 1.5 again and that gives us around 17.3 tons of rocket fuel. 
Let's add 18 tons of rocket fuel uh, and now our mass should be more or less 30 tons. Multiply that by 0.1333 and you end up with a number very close to 4. So let's add 4 rapier engines to our SSTL. If you want to add some monopropellant or some extra utilities, you can do that of course, just be sure to modify your initial mass accordingly. As with any other plane, it's not a bad idea to check if your center of lift is always behind of your center of mass, and if it's the case for your plane when it's full of fuel and when it's empty, then you can add landing gear and your payload or whatever it is that you need to put in orbit, and once this is done, you can set the engine action groups and you're ready to launch again. Flying this SSTO is pretty much the same as the previous one. Start the engines, throttle up and once you take off, set your heading to about 20 degrees and continue upwards until you reach the altitude of 24 km. Just make sure that your speed is increasing. Some people make this mistake and want to climb too fast. With SSTO space planes, you want to get as much as you can from jet engines before you switch to rocket mode. So ideally, you want to be flying at at least 1300 meters per second at 24 km altitude and have your velocity vector at 10 degrees before you switch to rocket mode. You should get there if you keep your heading at 20 degrees at all times, but if for whatever reason that doesn't work for you, just experiment with different ascent profiles. This plane and the previous one and the next one you will be building has insane thrust to weight ratio and it's actually almost a VTOL, so you're not limited to a very specific ascent profile to make it into orbit. With this plane, our journey into orbit and back to Kerbin is pretty much the same as with the previous plane, so I won't really be running you through that. But nevertheless, I did not cut the footage just for comparison purposes, if you would like to compare how you're faring with what I'm showing you here. With this particular plane, I did not attach the payload correctly, so I couldn't unload it once I was in orbit, so I had to pump the fuel to the back to balance the center of mass, but that didn't matter that much. So I'll stop talking right now and I'll let you enjoy the video and the music. Once we are back on the ground, we'll talk a little bit about the third Mark III SSTO that we are going to build today, but for now, safe landings. This vessel is probably the most interesting one, as it actually has some serious payload capacity. We want to put 10 ton of payload into orbit, so with the cockpit and the cargo bay and other utilities, our initial mass is around 18 tons. Multiplied by 0.72, we get 13 tons, so we'll grab the 14.3 ton liquid fuel tank. Our total mass is now 32.3 tons more or less, and to estimate how much rocket fuel we need, we multiply that by 1.5, and we get 48.5 tons. I added 55 tons, so a bit more. And now our total mass is around 88 tons. We multiply that again by 0.1333 to get a rough estimate of how many rapier engines we need to add to our SSTO and we end up with 11. To show you that we don't really need that many, I added just 9 rapier engines. Our thrust to weight ratio is still pretty high and we will have no problem getting this into orbit. Again, after setting the action groups, we are ready to launch. If you manage to successfully fly the last two SSTOs into orbit, this one should be equally easy. We are carrying 10 tons of ore as our test payload here, but you can replace it with something more useful if you want to. The ascent profile is pretty much the same as last time, but I encourage you to try out your own variations and see what works for you. In any case, I'm leaving you with this sped up footage and I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you have any comments or questions or you run into any problems, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Good luck!